Series. So how's your uh, WonderCon panel? I heard you're a CBS hit maker already. <laughs> That's what they tell me. Um, yeah, well, I haven't done the panel yet, but um, I'm, it's always, I think it's always very, um, you know, television is in a medium where you, um, where you get immediate feedback the way you do if you're doing uh, like stand-up comedy or, or theater. Um, so it's always, for me, um, when I come to a convention, just really rewarding and a, rem a reminder of why I do it to see a, a, a room full um, <laughs> Hopefully full. I haven't been out there yet, um, but a, a room full of people that uh, that 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 enjoy what you you know that, that enjoy what you do. It's a reminder of who you're who you're speaking to, um, and so I always really enjoy coming to these. Well, you've done this before with uh, Elementary, right? Sure. Yeah, with Elementary, uh, with the Forty Four Hundred, which was another show I've written on. I've I've, uh, I've done quite a few of these uh, of these panels, but I always enjoy it. Well, first of, first of all, we have to congratulate you. At first, you only had, what, 13 episodes, but now you're renewed for, yes. for, the, for the rest of the season? We, we, uh, we've been, we were picked up some time ago for 22. In fact, I just finished writing the 22nd episode. Um, so now we, uh, we, we will, we're very close to the end of shooting our first season, um, and we await word on whether uh, we'll shoot a second one. So how do you come up with the ideas? I mean, you were planning just for a half season, and now all of a sudden they said, hey, you know what? You're so good, come with the full season. <laughs> well, um, I think in the, in, the, you know, in the CBS model, you sort of always know that in, in success, they're going to ask for more of what you're doing. So you, we, we, we sort of did plan a natural break point after 13 episodes. Um, and then also thought beyond that to uh, to to one at 22 episodes. So you you sort of you sort of build fail safes into the process where if they ask you to do more, um, you're not completely cut out. Going, uh, we got nothing. Uh, you know, the one thing I do have to admit, the show is addicting. I remember um, going to Culver City at the edit bay, edit bay to watch the first episode. Oh, you there. were there for that? Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. And the, and then I was telling my friends that, hey, you know what? This is a good show and. And and turns out to be all my friends are watching it like cool. as as an addiction. So what's the secret? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing um, to us? Are you like putting NZT in or water and on that way? day that you came? Yeah, actually, right. yeah. Um, <laughs> what is the secret? I think that um, I guess the secret is that you know we sort of set out each week. Our goal is to do at least one thing that you haven't seen on TV before uh, to present a new visual idea. Uh, a new mix of tones, a new um, something novel, something uh, something that'll surprise you and make you sit up and go, "Hey, I can't get I can't get that anywhere else." Um, and so I think the people that are responding to the show, I think I, I think I, I, I'm not inside their heads, but if I had to guess, that's the, I'd say that's what they're responding to. Well, I could tell you is some of the episodes, like one episode you did a comic book thing, another episode yep. you did an interview thing. I don't even know what to expect anymore out of your show. Well, that's the goal. <laughs> um, I mean, we. Uh, we wanted to we hopefully you can expect entertainment you know but like we do like to play with what you can expect on a weekly basis you know so yes we did the uh you know we, we opted to tell the backstory of a character in in comic panels um uh because it seemed a way like initially it was like well we want to tell we want this to be epic you know but we're not going to be able to shoot uh uh you know a bunch of guys jumping out of an airplane trying to pick a safe while they're doing it in the middle of a knife fight you know I mean it's just not realistic on a TV schedule so like well what if we did it with comic panels you know um, uh, and, and we're always looking for uh, what it is that makes an episode unique and on the episode with the talking head interviews we had sort of what felt like a very standard we had a story that worked. It was yeah. fine. It was a TV story, but we we're like, it's not, it's not special yet. Um, and so when we, we came up with the idea of sort of framing it, a la, uh, you know, the, the Office or Modern Family, um, it sort of it, 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 it popped off the screen for us. That's that's when we like to jump into it to a night episode. I've heard you're a Buffy the Vampire um, fan, so I have a feeling there might be a singing episode, hopefully in the future. <laughs> um, I, I am indeed a big fan of uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, I, you know, I think that they, they, they did the musical episode so well that the bar is very high. Um, I would say certainly our world is fanciful enough to accommodate it. Um, but I, I don't know. I wouldn't expect any. I, maybe not soon, but we'll get there. And for uh, Bradley Cooper, who is also the executive producer, and he comes on to the show once in a while, are we going to see him as a regular recurring character, one you know, just pops in and out? I mean, I think you'll continue to see Bradley sort of in, in the role that he's in right now, you know, I mean, as of we aired our 
our 19th episode last week, which he was in, which was the fourth one he's done this season. You know, I, I think that's about the, the the pace that we can expect to see uh, Bradley popping up in the show. Um, it, it's, it's great when he comes. I love writing his scenes. Um, um, he really feels like he he wants he doesn't want to overwhelm the show. Um, he wants to help the show. He wants to help the story along. He wants to be true to story, um, but that anything more than that um, might be you know might be could be too much the Eddie Moore story rather than the Brian Finch story. So I think the I think the model that we that we had this season where he's popping up at very interesting key moments is what we'll continue to use going forward. Okay, well I have one last question. Obviously we're still far away from the NZT, but I don't know if you heard on from the online news where the scientists have developed a way to actually reprogram our minds with certain skills like the matrix. What skill would you like? Oh my god. Um I would love the ability to get a refreshing night's sleep in four minutes of downtime. How Maybe, about that? Uh, that should be an NZT pill by itself. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, uh, that's from a man who has three young children. That's why, I, that's, why that's my dream, uh, my, my dream reprogramming. Five minutes of sleep, perfectly recharged. Terrific. And real fast, um, what do we see for, for the rest of the season? Um, an exciting conclusion? Uh, no, we decided to go unexciting. No, no, no. It's 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 a uh, it's a very exciting conclusion. What you're going to see uh, at the end is we're doing a two-parter where Brian Brian Finch for the first time has to go up against not just one person who has access to NZT and has oh. the same advantage that he does, but to a whole group of people. Um, oh wow! And so it's about how will he rise to that to that challenge. Uh, or not. You have to watch to find out. Hey, thank you very much. And it's a pleasure meeting you again. Yeah, thank you. Nice to see you again.